To develop a new formulation for sequence comparison problem, we will need to travel to the 19th century Japan and to visit one of the Yakuza-run casinos called Bakuta. The Yakuza crime syndicate had a humble beginning where the first business operation was running the network of frame shift casinos. And in these casinos, the favorite game was Chohan, when the dealer would uh, toss two dice and the uh, visitors would bet on the outcome, the outcome being the sum of numbers on all these two dice. So Cho means, as you probably guess, even, and Han means odd. This is, of course, a fair game. If the dice are not loaded, then there is 50-50 probability of winning. However, in Bakuta casinos, dealers often used uh, biased dice, loaded dice. And in this case, the outcome may be shifted towards uh, uh, casino owner or towards insider batters. Also, it may be fun to play Chohan in a yakuza casino. We will play an equivalent game where a dealer simply flips a coin and we bet on head or tail. The challenge here is that the dealer actually has a choice of two coins, fair and biased. For the fair coin, the probability of head is 1 over 2, of course, and for the biased coin, the probability of head is 3 over 4. At this slide, I showed the coins in blue and green, but in reality, the coins are completely identical, so you have no clue which coin the dealer uses. The question arises, suppose the dealer made 100 flips and 63 of them turn on head. Which coin the dealer used, fair or biased? This question, of course, doesn't make sense because any coin, fair or biased, can result in 63 flips. The right question to ask is, what coin is more likely if 63 out of 100 flips resulted in heads. How do we answer this question? Here's the hint. 63 is a little bit closer to 75 than 50. Should we then assume that the biased coin is more likely in this series of flip? Before we may came to this conclusion, let's try to estimate some probabilities. Let's consider a sequence of n flips denoted x equal x1, x2, xn with k heads. The probability that this sequence was generated by the fair coin is, of course, 1 over 2 to the power n. But the probability that it was generated by the biased coin is 3 over 4 to the power k multiplied by 1 over 4 to the power n minus k. How can we decide what coin is more likely? Of course, if probability of x being generated by fair coin is larger than probability of x being generated by the biased coin, that the fair coin is more likely. Let's assume, let's refer to this probability as blue probability and green probability, respectively, when we talk about probability of x generated by fair coin and biased coin. And likewise, if blue probability is smaller than green probability, then the biased coin is more likely. However, when these probabilities are the same in, in equilibrium uh, state when prob uh, blue probability equal to green probability, we can compute by doing some arithmetic that in this case, k will be equal to uh, logarithm base 2, 3, multiplied by n. Or in other words, k will be approximately equal to 0 0.632 multiplied by n. Which means that when the number of heads, uh, or fraction of the number of heads, is smaller than 0 0.632, it means that the dealer is more likely to use the fair coin. Therefore, our original intuition actually was incorrect. If there are 63 heads in a series of 100 coin tosses, then the dealer was more likely to use the fair coin 
Even so, 63 is closer to 75 than to 50. The dealers in traditional Yakuza-run casino were shortless to uh, avoid accusation and tampering the dice because a uh, shortless dealer is less likely to switch fair dice into biased dice. But reality was that even shortless dealers were able to switch their dice and we will model these situations with two coins up the dealer's sleeve and instead of the previous case when dealer ran a series of uh, uh, coin flips but always using either fair or biased coin, we will assume that the dealer now can change the coin at any moment with this probability 0.1. So after watching a sequence of flip, can you tell when the dealer was using the fair coin and when he was using the biased coin? Our attempt to read the dealer's mind brings us to the following casino problem. Given a sequence of coin flips, determine when the dealer was using the fair coin and when he was using the biased coin. Do you think it is a well-formulated computational problem? Of course it is not, because any outcome of coin tosses could have been generated by any combination of fair and biased coin. And therefore, we need to grade different scenario, for example, BBBBB, FFFF, BBFF, BB, differently, depending on how likely they are. But if we try to do this, then the question arises, how can we explore and grade 2 to the power n possible scenarios for coin tosses? Here's a simple approach to reading the dealer mind one window at a time. Let's choose a small window, let's say a window of five tosses, and for each such window, let's decide which coin is more likely to generate the outcome in this window. We already know how to answer this question. For example, for this window, H, 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 T, H, there are 80% of heads, therefore it's most likely have been generated by the bias coin. For the second window, we have only 60% of heads and therefore this is more likely to be generated by the fair coin. We will actually use ratio of blue and green probabilities and we will decide what coin generated the given outcome uh, by simply computing this ratio. If this ratio is smaller than one, then the uh, bias coin is more likely. If this ratio is higher than one, then fair coin is more likely. And we will also introduce log odds ratio, which is simply base two logarithm of this ratio. And in this case, as we know, base two logarithm equal to the number of tosses minus base two logarithm of three multiplied by the number of heads. And our decision rule for deciding whether a given window was generated by biased or fair coin will be simply if log odds ratio is less than zero, then it is a biased coin. If it is larger than zero, then it is a fair coin, and it is represented by this simple row. So to continue reading the dealer mind, we will go through the whole sequence and every time computing which coin is more likely, and in the end, we will classify all these windows into being more likely to be generated by biased or fair coin. The question, however, arises, what are the disadvantages of this approach? The obvious disadvantage of the sliding window approach is that different windows may classify the same flip differently. Also, the choice of the window left obviously affects our conclusions, but how do we know how to choose the window lens? And that all may be an interesting introduction into makeshift casino and coin flipping but what it has to do with biology. To explain what coin flipping has to do with biological application, we will start from a simple example of CG islands and then move to more complex examples. The question we will ask, why are CG dinucleotides more rare than GCN dinucleotides in genomic sequences? Well, different species have 
widely different GC content or percentage of G plus C nucleotide in the genome. For example, gorilla and human have GC content 46%, why platypus has GC content 58%. Which means that, on average, if the distribution was uniform, you would expect that both nucleotide G and C appear in the genome with this probability, in human genome, with this probability at 23%. And therefore, you would expect that each of dinucleotides CC, CG, GC, and GG appear in the genome with this frequency 5.29%. But the reality is that the frequency of CG in the human genome is five times smaller. Why? Methylation is a DNA modification that adds a methyl CH3 group to the cytosine nucleotide, and it often happens within a C in CG dinucleotide. The resulting methylated cytosine has the tendency to deaminate into timine. And as a result of methylation, CG is the least frequent dinucleotide in many genomes. However, methylation is often suppressed in the areas around genes called CG island, where CG appears frequently. For this toy example, this would be a CG island. And the question arised that how, it, suppose you want to find genes. How would you search for CG islands as a prerequisite for finding genes? Well, if we would use the same paradigm of log odds ratio and simply classify CG island as more likely in the area where this log odds ratio is less than zero and uh, non-CG island more likely in the area where log odds ratio is larger than zero, then we will arrive to a classification algorithm for CG islands. However, there are a few issues. As before, different windows may classify the same position in the genome differently. It is not clear how to choose the length of the window to construct CG island. And very importantly, it is not clear whether we should use the same length of windows for different regions of the gene. And in the next section, I will describe the notion of hidden Markov model that provides a new, better paradigm for problems like finding CG islands and many, many other problems in bioinformatics.